Well, hello, 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 and welcome back to another Rise of Empire video with me, Mr. Gill. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for all of your previous views, likes, comments, suggestions, subscriptions, and all of that jazz. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're back, continuing our, our first day of Reign of Chaos. Uh, we've made a little video quickly at reset yesterday, uh, reset today, um, and now it's several hours later, early in the morning, and I'm like, right, let's get some work done. Now just to kind of go over some of the basics again and to kind of touch on what we're doing. Now you can see that we have an Alliance Center placed here. That Alliance Center now has buildings placed all the way around it in a particular configuration. This configuration is based on what we wanted to do. This is not necessarily what you have to do. However, this is the configuration we have taken. Placing all of these buildings is the responsibility of each member of your Alliance. However, R4 and R5 can move these buildings if need be. So you can see very easily that I could take this one here. Oh no, not that one because it's burning. You can't move a burning building. It has to have full durability. But I could take this little guy here. This is me. I could go to view and I can go to relocate. I can then place this building anywhere I like as long as it is connected to another building. Okay, so buildings have to be connected to buildings. You can't just place buildings next to tiles. So you can see here, in order to get to this second ring and have this space in between, we have to place a building here so that we can place these buildings on the outside. Now this defensive structure is coming together and you can see that there is no space, there is no two by two space where an enemy castle could plant. Castles themselves are two by two areas and we're not leaving any two by two spaces for an enemy castle to come in and do uh, whatever they like. The closer they can get to this thing and then destroy it, the faster we lose the battle. Now, once you have started getting your things into place, you need to start thinking about tiling defensively, but also increasing the level of these buildings. Now, how do we do that? And it's very simple. All of these different types of farms, non-functioning quarry, uh, crumbling mine, abandoned farm, uh, half ass distillery or whatever the hell it is, <laughs> all of these things uh, produce resources. By owning this tile, we are gaining a certain amount of resources automatically. If we pop into here, Reign of Chaos, and we go to Territory, you can see here is a list of all the tiles I own. And also, below them, it'll tell me how much of a certain resource I am collecting per hour. In order to collect these resources, I have to press Harvest. Bam! You can now see that it brings me a whole load of those resources. Those resources go straight into your backpack. Backpack! backpack uh, and I think they're kept in others they are there we go down here you can see bam all the military supplies no they're not that's not the ones I want actually where are they they must be there there we go uh, we can see rusted ingots terrible hard tack horrible moonshine chipped marble and crooked lumber these are the resources that you need to process we process these resources in the building here called the Frontline Workshop. Now if we pop into it by view, we can see a few things about it. We can move it obviously, but what we need to do is pop into it through production. We can also get to this production page by going through the event screen, Reign of Chaos, Honor Structure, Frontline Workshop, Production. And you can see that it is currently producing stuff. We have lots of little uh, slots up here that most of them are locked. We need to be able to unlock these in order to produce more material faster. Now let me just stop this one like that. Stopping it does nothing, it just gives you what you did. Now we can see here that I can select any material to be processed. This is gonna take a certain amount of time depending on the amount of material. It also consumes charcoal, so you will have to make sure that you do have an ample charcoal supply. Um, but I can produce any amount of material I like. What you get out of the material is clean versions of things that you need. So. For example, taking this hard tack, this hard tack is what we get from an abandoned farm by owning abandoned farms. That's gonna give us military supplies on this side. It's also gonna give us a bunch of real food on this side. Now, this one, military supplies, is probably the most important one to begin with. So let's actually start production on that again. We need the military supplies in order to upgrade the coalition base camp. So let's have a quick look at the coalition base camp. Uh, first off, we can heal some of our troops, or eight of them already. 
Now, if we wanted to upgrade or level up this thing, you can see here it takes another 8,000 of the military supplies in order to level this up. Leveling this up will increase our troop loyalty by 100 points. That is the same for every building. You can see there's actually a couple of those buildings there because you get one of each of these buildings for each alliance center that you build. We have currently built two, so you can see that I have two frontline workshops and two coalition base camps. Um, one of them is only level one, but even if I looked at the level one, one, level one, one, it's going to give me a hundred. So any level of the coalition base camp, any level upgrade will only give me another 100 troop loyalty. Now, what is troop loyalty? Troop loyalty is what we need to increase in order to take higher level tiles and resource plots. You can see this is a level nine. If I click on this at the moment, it says my current loyalty is 501. I will suffer 100% total HP damage each turn if I attack this. That means I will die. <laughs> okay, so that means if I attack this tile, I will not succeed and I will lose my troops, though they will be wounded and I'll have to heal them up. In order to take this, I need to increase my loyalty above the rebel zeal or even to match the rebel zeal. If we find a level five plot, say, where's a free level five? Oh, I guess we can look at this one. You can see here, my rebel, the rebel zeal is 600. I currently have 500 loyalty, but so I will only suffer 7.96. If I can add another 100 to my loyalty, that will match the rebel zeal. If I can match the rebel zeal, then I will be able to take this tile without any loss or wounded people, uh, soldiers, and that's what we need to get to. Now, obviously, at 7.96%, you can take a judgment. So currently, I own a couple of level 5 tiles that I have attacked and taken a little bit of casualties for them and then healed them up, but I did that in order to take those level 5 tiles and to own those level 5 tiles. The purpose of all of this is to constantly upgrade, so upgrade the tiles that you have so that you can then increase the loyalty that you have and that loyalty then means that you can upgrade more tiles and that means you get more resources, you process faster, etc, etc. That all leads into giving you honor points and honor value that you can then use here in the specialization. Okay, this specialization, you can add one here. See, we've got this thousand honor points for completing certain things. We can go like that, bam. We want 1500, we need a lot to go. Uh, but that means that we can then focus our specialization on certain uh, streams, yeah? And we can see this is the construction specialization, there is the combat specialization, and then the resource specialization. I strongly recommend that you play this way. <laughs> we go for construction, and we go for processing speed, and we follow the top line around processing speed and we're going to keep on going this will give us an extra processing queue which means we're going to be able to process double the amount of stuff that we could before and we're just going to follow this for a little way so that we're producing and processing as much material as we possibly can so that we can then go back and upgrade these these things as fast as humanly possible getting the coalition base camps up is the key because you want to be able to take higher tiles why do we need to be able to take higher tiles well if we come and look out here, this is actually a level five plot up here near the AC. Now all the ACs have to be placed in their bands. You can see this is band two. This is band one, the desert. That's where AC one has to be placed. Uh, this is band two, the grass, which is where AC two has to be placed. And then you have band three, the dark forest, which is where AC three has to be placed. A all the tiles increase in power and uh, the amount of uh, rebel uh, loyalty we will need to overtake them. We currently could not do anything in the dark forest, the dark green band, because we would suffer hundreds and hundred percent damage. So this level nine plot we can't get to. That means if we're facing an enemy alliance and they have an alliance center here in the dark green, uh, alliance center three that would be, or alliance center four, we're not going to be able to take it. We're not going to be able to attack it because we literally cannot connect it. In order to attack any Alliance Center or any of these structures, they need to be able to connect it to their tiles. You can see here these white ones. Imagine they're the enemy. They're not. That's H69. They're our friends. But imagine they're the enemy. They need to connect these white tiles to our building. So say here, they need to take those two tiles 
in order to connect to that building and then they can attack any of the buildings connected to that tile yeah or next to adjacent if you would so if we're not able to take these tiles which we personally currently can't then we're not going to be able to connect to this building which means we can't attack this building which means they can just sit there and laugh at us so we have to increase the level of our coalition base camp which is the one that adds more loyalty to you by adding that loyalty we can take higher level tiles getting those higher level tiles is going to give us more resources we're going to use those resources to process and then again to increase the level of that coalition base camp so that we eventually are bringing our loyalty level up as high as it possibly can be so that we can take higher level tiles easier and without any loss that is the name of the game <laughs> okay that's pretty much all you've got to focus on for this first week is taking high level tiles processing those resources getting those resources uh, getting those uh, uh processed resources to upgrade your buildings especially focusing on the coalition base camp right at the start and also then having a secondary focus of increasing the level of the frontline workshop which will increase your processing speed that's the key that's what we've got to do it's still day one and that's what we basically are focused on now you will see here that obviously we can only have a certain amount of territory uh, bam you can see we have currently 27 out of 31 allowed over on this side it says 0 out of 31 that is the territory we can own in a opposing state okay in other states there's how many different states probably eight different states uh, we will currently fight with um, and we can own 31 tiles in those eight other states you can also see a little plus button here these can be increased by using expand plans expand plans are what you're going to get from the now permanent or permanent for the entirety of the reign of chaos season if we click there next to our daily tasks there is now a new reign of chaos quest list by doing these things we're going to be able to get expand plans expand plans will give us more territory more territory is going to give us more resources etc 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 now you can see here that currently i own these two tiles i just took them you can also see that one of them i am abandoning i'm abandoning this tile because a i don't need it b so that i can free up space so that i can take more higher level tiles i'm also beginning very slowly the um outer defenses of this area which are going to be a grid basically that again allows no two by two space to exist so no enemy castle can port in very quickly we'll just say what we'll show you what we're doing there i'm just going to occupy this one like so i'm going to kill this guy uh this guy like a so we're going to kill this guy I'm going to run out of stamina very quickly. <laughs> this is the thing. It takes a lot of stamina to do this. Yeah? You're constantly managing your stamina. Um, it's slightly slightly frustrating, but yeah, it is what it is. Okay, so now we're taking this tile here. We're going to attack this guy. We're going to take this tile next to him. Like that. Like a so. And then we also want to take this tile here. Go on. Hurry up. Everybody's just hanging around outside the castle. Get your ass to work. Occupy. Now uh, that guy's there. Now you can see also once we take the tile, it stays under protection status. So for five minutes, nobody else can attack that tile. This is super useful during the duels, but we'll get onto that later when we actually have a duel. And we're just taking all of these and you can see what I'm doing if I abandon this one so we're keeping this one we're gonna keep we're gonna abandon that one eventually but we're gonna take this one here like so and we're gonna take this one here oh no I can't because we're too far away aren't we occupied no we can't because we've got too many now so this is why it takes time and this is why we're going to have to probably drop a ton of our tiles that we took last night but that's fine we took them in order to gain resources but what i'm trying to do here is create a little grid a chessboard if you would with alternate things so we're going to own alternate of the tiles 
So we're going to own this one as our main. Yeah, we're going to drop this one as soon as we can. Then we'll keep this one. We'll drop this one. We'll keep this one. We'll drop this one. We'll keep, take one here. We'll keep this one. And eventually what we'll build is a checkerboard grid going out where we own all of the tiles. Now, obviously, I will get everybody in the alliance involved in this. And when I say I will get, I'll ask somebody to get everybody involved <laughs> in the alliance to do all of this. But that's how we'll then build out our defense to a certain level so that we are then safe from any enemy what we don't want is any castle to be able to teleport there and that gives them very very close access uh, to attack us okay so that's day two continued or day one continued we're going to keep trying to do daily videos on this and, and show you exactly what i'm doing I'm hopefully i've explained that right now your priority should be taking higher level tiles processing those resources using those resources to upgrade your coalition base camp and secondarily, your frontline workshop, using any honor points that you get, uh, and you're getting these honor points from doing things like that. So attacking those things gives you honor points. Uh, you're gonna also get honor points from completing those quests, as I showed you in that other screen. You'll get honor points from there as well, and taking those honor points and putting you, them into the specialization of construction. Um, let me just show you again construction and then processing speed that is the best thing to do i believe anyway i hope that helped let me know down below we're going to try and do a video every day for at least a week on reign of chaos and all the little bits and pieces so you can see exactly what i'm doing as i get set up and as i get ready uh, we can keep an eye on our score by going into here this is the score for all of the alliances and then we can pop into alliance intel this tells us the score for everybody our season contribution which is made up currently of the amount of stones we have donated and our seasonal points which we have got from taking tiles this is why it's so important to save your stone you can see here look at that guardian skill 60,000 stone dropped in already within the first day love it absolutely love it anyway i will catch you in the next one thank you so much for watching see ya bye